My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we're going to delve into slightly this electric motor stuff. So off the back of the 100% efficiency video, people are saying stuff like, well, there's motors that claim that they're nearly 100% efficient. How is this possible? Good question. So, um, electric motors uh, use magnetic fields. So basically they're switching poles. Well, I'll do a video. I've basically... 3D printing, a thing where we can stick some magnets on. I'm going to talk about single poles and then multiple poles and how this helps you and stuff like that. Um, at constant speeds and stuff. I'm sure where maximum torque comes from, why their torque curves look like this. Where bike torque curves look like, well, maybe not that good. <laughs> um, bloody bar, look at the state of it. Um, but yeah, uh, where does this 100% come from? Well, you could say the way to compare one to the other is this. If you say you had an engine like this. Oh my God, what's going on here? Oh, fuck me. See, as soon as I go wrong one slight bit, it all turns to shit. Bloody hell. So, start that again really quickly. Just say you had an engine like this, right? And then you had a primary reduction and then you have your input shaft, output shaft, and then your chain and sprocket, right? In a sense, what we're doing is an electric motor is just a motor like this with a chain and sprocket. And you can automatically see the similarities. Let's just forget this, right? If we forget that, that's where the efficiencies lie. So if you look at this, you could say this is 95% efficient, and we could look at this and say that this is 95% efficient. Right, bingo, there you go. There's your similarities. Hope oh, that makes sense, and I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> How does this make sense? Well, because for our electric motor, it needs power. And where does that power come from? comes from a great big whacking fucking power station, be it nuclear, be it diesel generators. Let's just say we have an engine that looks like this. Um, like that. Right, and then on this we have our primary reduction, we have our input for our gearbox, we have our output for our gearbox, we then have a chain and sprocket like this to your rear wheel, like so. Right, that's just your engine basically, with gears and all this, I'm not doing the teeth, it'll be here forever. And then for electric motor, you have your motor with a just say we've got a sprocket on that maybe there is a reduction there or something and then you have your rear sprocket for your bike same kind of thing wonderful you can all of a sudden see the similarities let's just cut this bit off all right cut there you can see the similarities between the two electric motors on bikes will get gearboxes eventually but then that's a big weight concern because they've got batteries and stuff like that. But regardless, you can see the similarities. You've got what creates torque and your output, what creates torque and your output. All good. And when you compare them, this entire system is about 95% efficient. And this system is 95% efficient. What you've got is that motors require a power source and the power source is a battery. And your battery is akin to your fuel tank. So you can see the similarities there. One benefit bikes do have, or internal combustion engines do have, is that as they go through their fuel, they get lighter and lighter and lighter by quite a bit. If you've got, uh, just say, 20 litres of fuel, don't know who has 20 litres, which is about 18 kgs, 
and you've got 18 kgs of battery once you've got through half your fuel you've got half that weight battery doesn't really get that much lighter at all you're never going to really measure it um, and batteries are quite heavy so what's the difference here well it's this combustion bit at the top in it this is the difference where does this get its stuff from a big whacking great big power station you know be it nuclear be it coal be it whatever now and then you might have a solar wind farm or something shit like that that just tops up the power grid basically internal combustion engines are carrying around their energy extraction unit or module which is this top bit and back, uh, you know your electric motor isn't and not only does that sh um, you know not only you're not carrying the weight round of a power station or just your bit of a power station you're not carrying it it's the pollution as well the pollution is here out of the city kind of thing where with this it's spraying it out right behind you well that's not behind you is it that's behind you like so right so that's the difference in a sense these are mobile the self generating power units basically they're creating their own power from a liquid where batteries don't they are basically dependent on the national grid which is a good point because if things turn to shit like you see in a lot of these disaster movies you know i don't know super volcanoes aliens fucking deep impact something shit like that i'd much rather have a petrol engine because i can just fuck off with these bad boys if you're not charged up you're not going fucking anywhere and even if you do you've got limited runs petrol much easier to get your hands on um now yeah like where do these efficiencies come from well it's this bit so this bit has a 35 percent efficiency let's just say it's 35 well your power station's getting more onto about 50 percent because it's doing it on mass and weight isn't a really a consideration for them so much yes the rotor and stuff like that is but they can basically make um, power stations a lot more efficient than they can your engine because your engine has that horrible weight concern bastard um, but that is the difference and because of this all you need to do is just add in a liquid fuel and away you go where with this you are dependent on this entire power system working now obviously petrol has been around for a long time now so the infrastructure for petrol stations and stuff is absolutely everywhere where charging points aren't the power's there just not the points and you know that'll eventually change and stuff like that but that's where these efficiencies come from is that this system just say we're already creating torque at this point you know we've, we're ignoring this top bit then the efficiency through this system is you know really high and the efficiency through this system is really high it's because you're negating where that the, the power extraction where you're turning it from dead animals and plants and juices and stuff like that and you're turning that into usable um, energy of liberating the energy out of your fuels and they both pretty much do it in the same kind of well a similar way you know we are in power stations you are literally burning these fuels be it coal or be it petrol stuff like that or just you know crude well not crude oil it's basically gas industry and stuff like that um you're extracting the energy you're storing it in a battery or you're storing it in a fuel but you're doing it on board and that's where these inefficiencies come from if you look at the rest of the system it's quite efficient it's just that you're basically going around with your own generator and in a sense that's what they do at hospitals and stuff you know when the grid fucks off and dies for some reason then they have emergency backup generators which are combustion engines that's the beauty about them is that they're you know small packages but the lesbians dying and stuff you know that's going to see the end of these things eventually i say see the end of them petrol engines are always going to be around just like there are still radial engines around nowadays and just like there are still steam engines around nowadays but they'll be just become a hobby than mass transport and to be quite honest it doesn't really care i don't really care that much about that um you know it'll just it's like leaded fuel it's just it's race fuel now you know they still sell it it's just you're not allowed to use it or it's not you're not allowed to use it on public roads i think i don't know the law is actually about using leaded fuel on public roads i think they're not allowed to sell it not that you're not allowed to use it regardless you can see where the inefficiencies and the efficiencies are in these systems the one other thing that i need to say is that this 
it has weight to extract that energy where these electric systems are in a sense the saving grace is the fact that they don't have to carry around their work their energy production part with them um gearboxes will come a thing with electric motors as soon as they start to slim down things people keep on going about battery technology <laughs> good luck with that it's it, 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 what we have already with the lithium ion batteries and stuff that has taken 50 years to get to that point getting better batteries and you know for the, the car the car and the bike electric motors to become so much better you're going to have to have something that has like a 50% increase of how much energy it can store per how much it weighs. It, them jumps aren't going to happen. They're just not going to happen. You know, people keep on saying, we have to wait for the battery technology to catch up. This is physics. There's what you can do and what you can't. It's not just, we'll just wait and some genius will come out with something. It's just not the way it works. You know, it's like the combustion, the combustion process and how efficient that is. You can see where from the last 100% efficiency video where the losses are. There's not much we can do about them. We can tweak things here, there and everywhere, go lean burn and we can do this. And most of, you know, like I said, the Formula One stuff was energy recovery, um, which is stuff you've already done. The actual core efficiency of this system is physics. There's, you know, people just think, and I think that's what's happened between the 70s and now is that things change so rapidly and so quickly going from LPs to fucking MP3s that have no weight whatsoever. And there was that video about how much does an MP3 weigh. <laughs> but you know what I mean, one versus the other, it's not a contest. And we seem to think that things are just going to continue like that. It's just not going to happen. You know, it, 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 there, there are limits and these limits are physical you know quantum state things these are physical properties that we're going to start butting into you know it's just yeah people just seem to think that we'll just wait another 10 years and see what other magic happens it's just not the way it goes hope that makes sense i'll see you in a bit